Um, this is in a setting of a warehouse that is, um, to me, it felt like a huge bakery. Um, but the whole time I knew that there was a possible enemy attack. Um, I was standing in the entryway of like one of the huge like roll up doors of a, of a warehouse um, where they would bring deliveries in or something like that. I was standing in the midst of that and looking outside and outside I saw a huge um, like 18 wheeler type truck size that was open to be used as like a uh, bowl. And what was being made there was bread dough. Um, I was showing people how to make bread um, one of the men from our church, his name is Matthew. He's actually a um, uh, construction worker, and he was out there managing everything, making sure we had all the equipment ready. And I mean, like huge equipment um, to make this huge amount of bread dough. Um, he was dropping off supplies and, make, and making, helping make the bread outside in a huge mixer for me to cut and to shape into the bread's shape and... Um, and then poke holes in it and bake it like you would normally do with bread. Um, I wasn't planning on staying for long. I was actually needing to leave that warehouse before what I understood to be like a mafia coming after me. Um, and I knew that they would be there anytime soon. So everyone was wanting me there to help do this process of showing people how to make the bread and do it properly. And, but at the same time, I was like on this crunch time, like, look, I'm about to have this mafia come. I need to get out as soon as I can. Um, I told them that they couldn't mix the bread now and expect me to come back and do it later. Like I was trying to do time management and cause they wanted to, me to just come back later. I said, well, we can't do it later. If we do it later, then the bread's going to get dry and it's not going to be worth anything. It's going to get hard and, um, it's not going to be good. And that once it's all mixed, it must be dealt with right then and not later, or the dough would be too tough and not good to eat. I decided to stay, even though my husband, Ryan, wasn't happy about it. Uh, he had security with him, but he had no security that could stay with me to keep me safe from the mafia. And he um, instead gave me this remote that I could be able to touch in almost like a 911 emergency call if I needed anybody. He gave that to me in place of not being able to have security. And um, he left me with two young boys who I was supposed to be teaching how to make the bread. And there were some other few got young guys there as well to teach them. And um, soon after my husband left um, and the crew with him left, I was walking to get supplies and I looked out the window of the door and I saw the mafia pull, pull up and I was like, of course you did. As soon as he leaves, you guys have just shown up, right? I have no one to, to keep me safe anymore. All I have is this remote. <laughs> well, I looked down at the remote to push the button, but the emergency button popped off and it wasn't functioning. And again, I was kind of like, of course this would happen. And so I tried to put it back in and I pushed the button in hopes that it would have done something, but I didn't know if it did or not. Um, I felt at that moment that I was kind of being set up because I was looking out the window and I saw them. And then I was kind of looking at the young boys that I was left with. And I kind of felt like they kind of gave them a heads up of where I was at, but I wasn't sure, but I just had an inclination that that might be it. So I decided at that moment that I was on my own and I needed to keep myself safe as long as I could, hoping that that button that I pushed did something. And in the meantime, I'm going to go find a safe place. So then I went in um, what seemed like I went into a lower basement part of the warehouse and I went and found a hiding spot and I went deep, deep, deep into the warehouse for safety. If nothing else, this is my thought, if nothing else, um, it would take them a long time to find me um, before my rescue could come. I, I had a thought process of someone is going to come to save me. It just might be a little bit. So I'm going to do my best to try to confuse them, find different places to hide. And once they pass that I might go into another place, you know, anything to keep them from being on my scent. Um, the whole time I was more annoyed 
that the mafia and his men were there, then it's scared. I did imagine while I was hiding in a spot thinking, okay, what's the worst that they can do to me? And I started thinking of things, well, mafia are known for like, if you don't give them intel, they might cut off your fingers or, you know, do all these different things. And so those things ran through my mind of what could happen, but I never feared that that would happen to me. And then the dream ended. Okay, cool. Interesting. <clears throat> so a warehouse is a place of repository. It's a place of storage, right? You think of warehouses. Warehouses are mentioned in scripture. By the way, I would look those up. Okay. As it to the dream. What I'm going to do today is give you like the 50,000 foot flyover. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it's about provision and it's about creating provision. And I heard a couple of things. I heard the manna in the desert. Mm -hmm. Um, which is the idea of making daily bread. And then the other one was when the, the spies went into the land and the 10 spies came back with a good report, mm -hmm. you know, the other, the other 10, the 10 back, the 10 came back with a bad report and said, Oh, they're like giants. We're grasshoppers in their eyes. Right. And, and Joshua and Caleb said, yeah, but they'll be as bread to us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in other words, it's the challenge of overcoming adversity and uh, an offensive, an attack <laughs> that actually provides the sustenance and the training that they needed to be able to continue into the promised land um, to do what God had called them to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the idea of making bread, um, it represents both of those things. It represents provision and it rep represents provision as well as overcoming attack into the promised land. And mm -hmm. like you said, there you were in this place where, you know, you have this whole setup and you have the trucks and you got the bakery. Mm -hmm doing all this stuff and you're making, <clears throat> you're making bread and you're doing, you know, you're teaching people, um, but your protection has to leave. And so you have this button and of course the button in you know, the mafia does show up as soon as they leave mm -hmm. the button malfunctions. Um, <clears throat> but what you had is you didn't have fear. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is this is, this is a message to your identity and destiny that you're one of the two spies, not one of the 10. And so you're also entering a place where there's going to be sustenance and provision, not just for you, but for those that are going to be under your care and mentorship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's mainly an identity and a destiny dream talking about, you know, actionable intelligence would be look for the people that you're going to mentor and you're going to teach how to make bread and, mm -hmm. and know specifically what that is. You probably already know, but know specifically what that is. And don't be afraid of the attacks that come against you because they're going to, at the end of the day, they're going to be harmless. You won't even need to call for backup. You won't be afraid, you know, when, when anything comes that you know, the weapons formed against you won't prosper. Won't prosper right. One of the <clears> cool <throat> things is like, I mean, I'm, well, I'm a pastor's wife, but I'm also the young adult teacher. And that's been one of the things that the Lord has laid on my heart in the last two years or so. Mm -hmm. And to raise them up to be a generation that doesn't fear the enemy, but knows how to um, attack and, you know, yeah. and not just, you know, hide in their, in their hole and, and be scared. One of the other cool things I forgot, I remember there was, I forgot I left this out. There's a huge stick of butter the size of tree logs out there too, in order with the bread. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was pretty cool is not too long ago, I had another dream where someone called me out in the dream and said, Hey, aren't you the lady with the butter? Hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, that went along because no other dream that I ever had was with yeah. the stick of butter. <laughs> and so apparently I'm, I'm known for the butter, I guess. The butter wow. that goes with the bread. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks for sharing your dream with us today, Jen. Sure. Thank you very much.